So we'll slowly get started. It is helpful, but not mandatory. If the long edge of your mat is facing towards a computer screen. But if we haven't practiced together, I'm Mel, one of the Emerge Docs at Chio, and a yoga instructor for, gosh, almost two years now. So today's practice will be pretty soothing. There is some balance and more activating stuff towards the end. Um, but I think it'll be a nice chance to just check in and see how our bodies are doing. So with that being said, feel free to come to a seated position on your mat. I encourage you to have your right foot kind of placed in front of your left in this cross-legged position. Now this can be hard for some of our hips. So if that is the case, feel free to take a blanket and use it to prop up your hips like so, just to take some of that pressure off. Totally not mandatory. If there's another stance you need to take, go for it. Let's arrive on our mat. And close our eyes if you feel safe to do so. Allow your palms to rest on our knees. Let's turn our attention to our breath. Letting it wash over us, feeling very passive as it inflates and deflates throughout our body. We can imagine that somebody's turned on a nice warm shower right above our heads that is just releasing warm water, completely releasing tension. First, through our scalps and unwrinkling our foreheads, allowing our jaws to unclench. Tongue might fall from the top of the throat. The shoulders relax and move a couple millimeters down away from the ears. You can feel that extra weight in the elbows and in the hands. Be very conscious of how our sits bones are making contact with the mat or blanket or towel or block. Feeling heavy and rooted in the legs. From this space of inner connection, we can invite a bit of subtle movement just by changing where we feel the most pressure on our sits bones or the bowl of our pelvis. So let's tilt forward ever so slightly to feel more weight at the front of our pelvis. Tilt towards the right, tilt back and to the left. Making these subtle movements as we shift the weight around our pelvis, allowing the spine and neck to follow. Maybe inviting slightly larger movements as we get comfortable. A nice way to mobilize the spine, especially if we spent our morning hunched over a desk. And now let's reverse that circle if we haven't already. Allowing the movement to originate from the pelvis where we're making contact with the mat. Let's all slow our movements and pause for stillness. Now tilt our pelvis forward and allow the spine to follow. You'll eventually reach an edge where the back of your pelvis starts to come off the mat. And once you get here, curl the spine over the legs, dra draping one vertebrae at a time, and then catch a wave of inhale to tuck under the pelvis, rising up. Let's repeat that action, but let's turn towards our right leg, tilt forward so that we can still feel that connection rooted through the left hip, and pour the spine over the leg. Moving slowly and consciously, being ultra aware of how we're opening up all those paraspinal muscles. Now let's turn towards the left leg, tilt forward, and then allow the vertebrae to fall. Let's 
Lovely. Let's place our palms behind us and simply switch the position of the legs. So this time the left one is in front or whichever one is opposite from what it was before. Once again, let's tilt forward with our pelvis. And once we start to lose that connection, tuck the vertebrae to fall one by one. Then rise on up. Let's turn towards the left leg this time. Tilt forward and release the spine. Feel free to proceed at your own pace with your own breath. Tilt towards the right leg, and this is the last one, so really savor it. Come forward and pour the spine over the leg, and then ever so slowly rise on the inhale. Hang out in your seated position to feel that flush of energy and mobility. Let's all return to our seated position. From here, inhale the left arm up into the air and send it up and over to the right, feeling that mobility all the way from the fingertips to the left hip, and then flip it over. So this time inhaling the right arm up and then sending it over all the way to the left, feeling that lengthening from the fingertips to the right hip, which will still be rooted nicely to the mat. Now listen for the change. We're going to shine our heart down, plant our palms, release our legs, and meet in a tabletop position. You can reposition on your mat. Take your time getting here. Absolutely no rush. We'll have our palms underneath our shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Let's tilt our pelvis upwards, drop the belly, pull the heart through the palms, to come into a cow pose on the inhale. And then on the exhale, starting from the pelvis, tuck under, round the spine, and push away from the mat to come into cat pose. Repeat these actions on your own time with your own breath. Feel free to make the movement your own. Maybe you want to send your hips back a little bit during cat. Maybe you want to look side to side or do some barrel rolls with the spine. Whatever feels good, trust that it's the right thing to do for your body today. Great. Let's now all pause for stillness and neutral once you've evened it out. And from here, let's send out our right leg, rocking back and forth a little bit with the toes tucked under to get a nice stretch all the way through that plantar fascia and back of the leg. Let's now slide that right leg all the way over to the left corner of our mat, or maybe even coming a little bit off the mat, and tilt to look over our left shoulder back at that right foot. Pause here, turn the attention to the breath, noticing how the inhale enhances that sensation of opening all the way from the top of the head the side of the right body to the toes. Let's slide the toes back into alignment, really press through the palms, bring our belly towards our spine, and now bend through the knee and tug it under the body, really trying to lift the knee up towards the chest. And on your next inhale, send it out, pressing through the heel. We can repeat this movement a few times, bringing the knee into the chest, lengthening through the inhale. If you'd like, you can also send out your left arm and then bring knee to elbow underneath the body. Pick your favorite, you get the same benefits either way. It takes a lot of courage to do what's right for you and your body, regardless of what others are doing, or what the expectations might be. I find both in yoga and in life. <laughs> Let's do one more and then return the palms underneath the shoulders, knees under the hips. This is a great opportunity to come onto the knees and roll out the wrists a little bit because we're spending a lot of time on the wrists right now.
Okay, let's return to our tabletop. Same thing next side. So from here, let's send out our left toes, rocking back and forth, getting that stretch through the plantar fascia. And now slide the left toes over towards the right, look over that right shoulder, pause, and allow the breath to be the exploration in this pose. Just really savoring that opening throughout the left side of the body. Now let's bring our toes back into alignment, raise them up off the mat a few inches, and then bend the knee in and tuck it right up under the chest, feeling the core activate. Inhale to send it out through the heel and repeat this movement as many times as you'd like, following your own breath, option to add in the right arm. If you'd like, you can experiment with bringing the knee to elbow as you inhale and then exhaling to lengthen. Noticing how you might maintain some extra buoyancy with that little crunch as you bring the knees to the elbows. Figure out what works best with you as long as the action is connected to the breath, we're doing good things. Let's even it out. We can all do one more. And now let's return to our tabletop position. Come onto our knees and wiggle out the wrists a little bit. From here, let's cross our legs, return to a seated position at the bottom of our mat with lots of mat in front of us. Take whichever foot you have in front, and we're actually going to use our thumbs to give it a little foot massage. Maybe starting at the heel, then kneading through the arch of the foot, imagining that you're smoothing it out, like there's some wrinkles there. Meet at the ball of the foot, feeling each of the individual toe mounds. And you can experiment with different amounts of pressure, maybe just very light touch to wake up the feet, maybe more of a deeper massage to work out any tension. We'll be doing some balancing, so it is lovely to have some extra connection. All right, great. Finish up with this foot, send the weight back and switch so the next foot is in front. And same thing, starting at the heel, show the feet some love. In and out of yoga, they do a lot for us day to day. So taking the time to do this massage is just so nice. And it can be tricky when we're doing these kinds of massages, but as always, think about how we can join the action to our breath. Sometimes closing the eyes can help with that. Okay, let's now take a few seconds to end our foot massages and walk back forward to our tabletop positions. Notice if your feet feel a little bit extra light, a little bit tingly. Walk your hands one palm print forward so the palms are in front of the shoulders, tuck under the toes, and you guessed it, we're sending the hips up and back to a downward facing dog. Pedal up the feet. First downward dog of the day. So press out through the hands, send the hips up, and then allow the heels to go towards the mat. It truly does not matter if they touch. <laughs> You're experiencing a lovely opening in the hamstrings either way. My heels often touch, but not until the end of a practice, usually the first downward dog. It's just a bit of discovery and exploration. So feel free to give yourself that space and grace. Wonderful. Now let's bring our feet together. If they were apart, really together. 
And let's take our right foot and cross it over our left, really experiencing that opening through at the back and sides of the legs. And let's take the left foot and cross it over the right. And let's repeat this action a few times as we ever so slowly and lovingly saunter our way up to the top of the mat, eventually pausing with our feet underneath our hip joints, bending through the knees, coming into an Uttanasana forward fold. Experiment with different depths of bend in the knees to find that spot where you feel open in the back and the hamstring. Catch a wave of your next inhale to straighten through the legs without locking, slide the palms up to the shins, send the shoulders back, neck long and beautiful, as we rise into a halfway lift position. On your next exhale, calf hit the spine over the legs. And now listen for the change. Send the weight back to the heels. Inhale to tuck under the pelvis and stack the spine vertebrae by vertebrae, rising up slowly, consciously to a Tadasana mountain pose at the top. Feel that flush of energy as you arrive in your mountain pose. And take a minute to just appreciate where we're at. From here, let's shift our weight ever so slightly to our left leg. And option here to take a yoga block or maybe a towel or firm blanket and put it underneath your left foot. If you have one. So a block, towel can work as well too. If you've got the support of a wall, that's helpful, but it's not mandatory. And if you don't have any props, you can also just really press out of the mat with that left foot, tighten through the muscles of that right leg a little bit, and then kick the leg forward and back. It's okay if it grazes in the mat. Just feeling a little bit loose in the hips, feeling that connection from the feet to the head. Great. And now from here, let's really press out of that left leg, bring our knee to our chest, just like we did when we were horizontal in our tabletop position. You can have your hands at your hips, at your sides, up overhead, wherever feels good. And now let's touch our toes behind us, maybe about two footprints behind. Let's repeat that motion, bringing the knee to chest, tapping the toes behind. Totally okay to use the support of a wall, Totally okay to bring the toes up a very small amount, honor where your body's at today. As always, joining the action to the breath. The next time your toes are behind you, let's pause here and then turn to face the long edge of the mat so that we're more or less facing the camera. Let's shift our weight from side to side. You can experiment with turning your toes in and out. And now, keeping our knees slightly bent, we're going to simply turn our torso from side to side, allowing the arms to splay out. You can go nice and slow. You can get into the speed and enjoy a bit of a massage against the hips as your arms kind of thwack it. This is called the bear twist. It has a few different names. But it's just a great way to imagine tension just melting off your body and flinging it across the room. You can start to slow your movements bit by bit, eventually coming to pause in stillness facing the middle. Let's inhale our right arm up and over, getting a little bit of a stretch in that side body, option to look up to the elbow crease. And then exhale it down. Let's inhale the left arm up and over, getting a stretch in that side body. And now listen for the change. We're going to tilt following that arm and bending through that left knee as we come on down to a kneeling position. Take your time to get here. No worries if that transition doesn't work for you. We'll all meet in a kneeling position. Option to use a blanket or fold over your mat for some extra cushioning for the knee. Once you arrive, inhale the arms up and then cactus through the elbows, tugging back so that we're really feeling that opening along the front of the left hip. From here, let's allow our arms to come to our sides, send our hips back and straighten through that front leg. Feel free to walk it forward a little bit if it feels good to do so. 
making sure not to lock up through the leg. Inhale to really shine your heart forward. And on your next exhale, send the hips over, arms up overhead. Transition between these two positions, this Anjaneyasana and Ardhanavan half splits. Option to keep your arms in the air as you go. So dragging the arms to the sides, sending out some energy past your front leg. If one place feels particularly good and you want to stay there, feel free to hang out there. There's no need to keep moving between these positions. The next time you're in your Anjaneyasana, pause here in this lunge position. And now let's bring our palms to frame the front foot, lifting the right palm into the air as we twist towards the right. Inhale here, feel that opening all the way from your right shoulder to your left hip. And now let's circle the arm down, press into the palms and step back into our tabletop position. Same thing next side. Good opportunity to grab a sip of water, other beverage if you'd like. So we'll walk our palms out, palm print or two in front of the shoulders, tuck under the toes, and send the hips up and back into our downward facing dog, Adha Mukha Svanasana. Pedal up the feet, enjoy the journey to get here just as much as the pose itself. Bring your feet together, and this time I invite you to cross over your left foot, or the opposite of whatever you did before, as we saunter our way, going up this catwalk across our mat, we bring maximum attitude to it, just enjoying the journey as we arrive into our Ichinasana forward fold. Catch a wave of inhale to slide the palms up the shins, loop the shoulders back, lengthen through the spine to our halfway lift. And then on your next exhale, fold forward back into Ichinasana. Shift the weight into the heels, rise up through the spine, stacking it vertebrae by vertebrae, returning to our Tadasana position. Taking it now to press up through the right foot. Again, option to prop it up with a yoga block, blanket towel, or just kind of tighten through that left leg a little bit and swing it back and forth. Option to use a wall for some support. You want that left hip to feel nice and loose and springy. Awesome. Let's pause in the middle, press out through that right leg and bring that left knee in towards the chest, really any amount. From here, let's tap our toes behind us, knee towards the chest. Repeat this a few times, taking a minute to decide where you'd like to put your arms. Really feeling the glutes working to support us, the strength in that standing leg to make this movement possible. If you really want to bring the knee into the chest, you can feel that core activating just like we did in our cat cow and tabletop. The next time the toes are behind you, pause here. Tilt towards the long edge of the mat, and you got it. Just a brief bear twist. Shifting your weight side to side, maybe making it a bit funkier this time. You can do like a little bend of the knees, shift your weight side to side. You can go a little faster. Maybe you want to take it back and go even more slowly than before. Experimentation is welcome and encouraged. And close your eyes so you're not influenced by what myself or anyone else is doing. And let's all slow our twist. Coming to pause in the middle, eventually for stillness. Inhale the left arm up and over, really feeling that connection all the way down to the toes. And then send it down. Inhale the right arm up and over, really feeling that connection down to the foot an option to turn the toes towards the short edge of your mat, bend your knee, bend your elbow to arrive in this kneeling position. Take a minute to maybe widen out your stance, maybe pad your knee, do what you need to do to make it comfortable. 
scoop up the air, send it up and back as we come into an Anjaneyasana. And then allow the elbows to travel to the sides, send the hips back, chest forward into Ardha Hanuman half splits. Once again, play between these two positions, noticing and honoring if anything feels different or sticky or on one side compared to the other. Seeing how we can use the breath to smooth out any areas of tension. The next time you're in Anjaneyasana or your low lunge, let's pause here. Allow the palms to paint the wall in front of you. Frame that front foot. Send the left arm up into the air to twist towards that bent front knee. Use the breath. Take note of the connection all the way from that left armpit to the right hip. And now let's windmill that arm frontwards and down to frame the foot. Push through the palms. Step it back into a tabletop position. Everyone here, let's widen out our knees, toes together, send the hips back into a brief child's pose. Or not so brief. You can hang out here as long as you'd like. This is a great opportunity to maybe grab a sip of water, kind of take stock of where we're at. We'll do a similar sequence, but we'll add on a little bit. Noting, of course, that at any point, if the new sequence is offering something that's not working for you, you can repeat the lovely sequence we just did. All right, from your child's pose, let's shift our weight forward, coming into a tabletop position, walking at the palms, tucking under the toes and rising on up into our downward facing dog. Take a minute to pedal up the feet. And this time you can repeat that stepping or you can hop or jump up to the top of your mat, kneading in a forward fold. Rise to halfway lift. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale to slowly rise to your Tadasana. Seeing if you can go a little bit more slowly than you want to. Noticing how that really tunes you into all the lovely sensations happening throughout the back and core. Rise up into Tadasana. And this time, press into your left leg and immediately start to raise that right knee into the air. You can repeat what we did before with tapping the toes behind or raise the right knee up, straighten through the leg without locking it, bend the knee, send it back, into a warrior three. Repeat this sequence a few times. Bent knee, straightening leg, bent knee, pushing out behind us. Totally optional, of course. You're more than welcome to repeat the toe tapping from before. You can allow your arms to come out in front of you if you'd like. Or doing any other creative movements with the arms that feel good for your body. Let's do one more sequence and then either meeting with our toes behind us or in our warrior three, we're all going to plant those back toes, scoop up the air and rise into a high crescent lunge or high anjaneyasana. Take your time meeting us here. No rush whatsoever. From here, let's straighten through that front leg, send the arms out to the sides and come to a flat back position, really feeling that opening throughout the front leg. Bend into the knee, scoop up the air, send it back into your lunge. Once again, option to repeat between these movements, knowing that you can come to your knees at any time. You get the same benefits either way. Let's all meet in our Anjaneyasana. And from here, let's send our right arm up and over to pause into a Virabhadrasana two position. Feel free to lengthen out your stance, making sure that the front knee is bent, back toes are pointed towards the long edge of the mat. And now let's turn the toes to face the long edge of the mat, hands to the hips, bend into the knees and fold forward. 
take a minute here to really release any tension that's developed. And now let's walk the palms towards our right foot, allowing the left toes to turn in. Now, setting up for a twist, option to return your back knee to the mat or keep it elevated as we raise the right arm into the air and twist towards the right. Circle that top arm up and down to frame the front foot. Step it back either into a tabletop or into a plank position. We'll pause here for a bit, feeling our core activating to strengthen us. And send the weight forward, then through the elbows to come all the way down to the belly. Drag the palms beneath the shoulders, press the tops of the feet into the mat as we rise up into a cobra position, Bhujangasana. Lower on the exhale, tuck under the toes and rise up either straight to plank or to the knees, your pick. Let's all send it back now to downward facing dog. Pedal up the feet, either hang out here in down dog for five breaths or take a minute to grab a sip of water. You can explore your downward facing dog or you can simply pause in stillness. Wherever you're at, rejoin us in your downward dog. And now take a journey to the top of the mat, either stepping or hopping to face the shortage of the mat, meeting us in Ichanasana. Bend through your knees, slide the palms up to rise to your halfway lift. Pour the spine over the legs as you exhale, and now rise up into Tadasana. Make this the slowest rise to Tadasana you've done yet. Really feeling that connection between each of the vertebrae, and between the front and the back of the body. Noticing how the front of the core helps to support this in addition to the strong back muscles. Let's all meet in Tadasana at the top. And this time, let's really lengthen and push out of that right leg, lifting the left knee up. Take a minute to decide if you'd like to do your toe taps or bend the knee, straighten the leg, bend it in, send it back. You can repeat this with your own rhythm, following your own breath, making this series of movements whatever you would like today. And it's not an either or, maybe you do some toe taps, Maybe you do some of these warrior three variations. I really like the active lengthening through the leg here. Any active movements really help us to achieve more flexibility and openness in our muscles, much more than just like passively pulling on the leg or stretching it. Feel free to pause anywhere that feels good. Let's maybe do one more repetition. My standing leg is getting tired, probably yours too. And let's all meet in our rear Vidrasana Warrior Three or with our toes against the mat. Maybe step them back a little further. And let's plant the toes, scoop the air up into our crescent lunge or Anjaneyasana. Well done, we made it. From here, straighten through the front leg, arms to the side, it can be a bit of a balance challenge. To straighten through that front leg without locking it. Option, of course, to come to the knee at any point. And let's play between those movements, alternating between opening up the front of that left hip to the right hamstrings. The next time we're in our Anjane Asana, our crescent lunge, let's pause here. Let's turn our attention to that left arm, send it up and out to come into Virabhadrasana 2 or Warrior 2. Feel free to lengthen out your stance, move the hips to find a spot where it feels buoyant, making sure the shoulders are above the hips, not too far forward or too far back. Gazing past those front fingertips. Let's pause here. And now bring the hands to the hips, turn the toes towards the long edge of the mat, bend into the knees and fold forward from the hips. 
allowing the arms to cascade in front of you. This time you can sway side to side, or maybe pretend like you're a gorilla walking through the woods. Just really exploring and seeing if we can open up other areas of our body that maybe don't get so much attention. So the sides of the body, maybe the area between our shoulders or behind our shoulders, option to use some twists. Once again, make this movement organic and your own. Let's pause for stillness and now let's walk our palms up to frame that front left foot, allowing all of our toes to turn to face the same direction. Taking a minute to decide if today is more of a knee on the ground kind of day or knee up as we press through that right palm and send the left arm up into the air for a twist. Breathing deep here. Feel free to allow that front knee to go out a little bit if you want some more space for that deep belly breathing. And now let's send that left arm up and over to frame the front foot, press through the palms, send it back to a plank position, either on the toes or on the knees. Take a minute here to feel the body strengthening, welcoming any little shake, and then shift the weight forward, then into the elbows and let's all come onto the mat. Slide the palms back, press into the feet, and feel your back muscles activating as we rise up into Cobra. Option to maybe sneak side to side, noticing how that really activates the different sides of the back. And then lower on your exhale. Let's now watch for the change, press into the palms, come onto your knees and tabletop, separate up the knees, bring the toes together, and send it back into a child's pose. This is a beautiful opportunity to hydrate, to get a sip of water, and to just take stock of where we're at. You can walk the arms a little bit further forward, noticing how they create some more opening in the shoulders. Returning our attention to our breath and to our body. And so I'll shift our weight forward to come onto our tabletop position. So we've got time for one last little beat before we start to do our cool down. Option to do some yogi mountain climber. So I'll demonstrate first. You can kind of figure out what you're getting into before you commit. But essentially, you'll be starting from plank pose, bringing one knee into the chest, sending it out, bringing the next knee into the chest, sending it out. Really trying to focus on the lift of the knee towards the chest rather than just quickly moving them forward. So that's one option. The other option is to do what we've demonstrated already, where we send out the arm and leg, bring the knee to chest underneath, or focusing on just bringing that knee alone with our palms against the mat. You get the same benefits either way. Trust that whatever one you choose is the right one, and also feel free to alternate. You're not locked in. So pick your favorite. Coming to plank or a tabletop position, bringing knees into the chest, really focusing on rise and elevation. As we climb our mountains, notice if there's any negative self-talk coming up, focus on ways to make those thoughts productive. I like to approach these difficult movements with curiosity not expecting that the body's going to do anything, just seeing what it can do and often being pleasantly surprised. <laughs> All right, let's even at the sides, pause in your plank or on your knees. Let's now all come to our bellies. Amazing job. You can release the arms beside the body, turn on to the left side of your head, Maybe bringing your palms to make a little pillow for the hand if you would like. And pause here. Noticing now if you can feel your heartbeat more so than at the beginning of the class. And using that to kind of anchor your thoughts and experience. 
Let's turn on to the other side of our faces. Enjoying this well-deserved restful position. From here, lengthen through your arms. Specifically the left arm, you can drag your right palm back and roll onto your back. If you roll off your mat, no worries. You can do a little journey to wiggle back on as we start to enjoy some cooling maneuvers. So let's start with our knees bent, feet flat on the mat, palms beside our hips. Let's get a little light in the feet as we bounce the toes. Allow them to fall down, tilt the pelvis to press the low back against the mat, and then rise on up into a bridge pose. Nothing too high, after all, we're cooling down. You can repeat this movement following your own breath, really picking up the spine vertebrae by vertebrae. Most people like to inhale as the pelvis rises and exhale as the pelvis falls. We can also experiment exhaling to raise the pelvis and then inhaling to drop it down. Noticing how that does subtly change the experience. You can pause in stillness at the middle, allow your feet to walk out a little bit, knees in towards the mat, pause there for a little break for the low back. I'm just gonna check the comments. Awesome, you're very welcome, thanks for joining. <laughs> and feel free to do any other movements your body is craving. So maybe you want to send your arms up to a T and twist side to side. Maybe you want to bring your knees towards your chest and rock back and forth. Or separate the knees towards the armpits, reach between the legs, grab the other ends of the feet and come into happy baby. Pick your favorite. Once again, trusting that your instincts are the right ones. Nobody knows your body better than you. And maybe you're already resting in Shavasana, which is awesome. If you've already found your way to that stillness. Wherever you're at, let's release, start to walk our feet and hands out to our final Shavasana corpse pose if we haven't already. Align the feet to flop out to the sides, arms taking up space, palms facing the air as we return to our breath. This is a great opportunity to get any props, maybe a blanket to cover you if you're getting a little bit chilly in this cool down. Allow the breath to wash over you. Coming into some well-deserved stillness. Yoga is all about finding that perfect balance between effort and ease. And we did a fair bit of effort, so let's savor the ease just as much because both are equally important for our growth. I'll keep an eye on the clock. I promise I'll cue you out when it's time. Let's rest in silence for the next few minutes.
Start to turn your attention back to the physical room and invite some movement into the body by slowly wiggling the fingers and toes, noticing that jolt, that electrification of movement traveling up the arms and legs. You can expand the movement by circling the wrists and the ankles maybe turning the head side to side, feeling a lovely release in the neck. Inhale the legs together, arm up overhead, really lengthening, and then let it all go to exhale. Let's do one more. Inhale to lengthen, growing as strong and as big as you have all day, and then exhale to let it all go. Drag that right heel in towards the body. Press through the foot so you roll onto your left side. Allow that right palm to rest in front of the space and push on up into a seated position. Thank you very much everyone for sharing your time and energy with me today. Always a pleasure. I hope you have a wonderful day. Namaste. Thanks for coming and thanks for turning on the video too. It's always nice to uh, to see that folks are following along. Have a lovely day, you guys. <laughs>